Hello everybody, thanks for joining me for another One Man Review. Today I've got a brand new book, just got this in the mail, Finned by Nick Pyle. Um, Nick Pyle is someone that I stumbled across on Instagram, really enjoyed how he deals with color and his character designs, and I've been looking forward to his sequential work, so it's pretty excited to get this. This is out by uh, Death Wish is the publisher, and it's quite a large book. Um, you can see here is Abolition of Man number two, which should be out in stores in a week or so. Um, this is a regular size comic. And so you can see that Finned is basically a little bit smaller than a regular size comic open up to a double page spread. So it's it's quite a large book, uh, which is, is nice. And it's, it's printed on glossy paper. And, you know, that really accentuates the color work that Nick Pyle does, which I think is the, the star of the show. And also his character designs are just pretty singular. I mean, I know there's plenty of um, precedents for these types of things, but the drawing style combined with the color style then goes to make what I think are some really, really unique uh, color designs throughout this thing. The story in this book is a bit thin, I would say. This is pretty much an excuse to just go draw a battle in the desert. Um, and I that that is, you know, a bit problematic for me. But then you get drawings like this that are so cool. I also like the way that sound effects are handled in this. So like here it just says, Inhuman Bellowing. So instead of coming up with some like, raw sound effect, it's just that we got Inhuman Bellowing. And many times throughout you get this where it says single guitar note. So you get that sense of like out in the the desert, the Western movie, and you get that just kind of single note that adds drama to everything. I like that. I also quite like on this page the visual effect of uh, the, the focus, the shift in camera focus by just doing all of the drawing here with the markers only and all the drawing here and then taking the line out. I think that's really smart. But it is the color. It's the color that really does it for me. And like like the effect coloring that Nick Pyle does that really, really interests me. Like here, explosion, pong sound. Um, that's, that's funny to me. But like on this page here, you get the battle scene really in full effect. And you get a sense of how the colors use that drew my attention. And then here you get the effects like going back over with this whiteout pin over top. And that's the stuff about Nick Pyle's work that really, really draws me to it. It's kind of like a Barry Windsor Smith. Like this is the closest I've ever seen anyone else get to taking on and making their own Barry Windsor Smith's coloring style where he uses like watercolors or inks or something like that, ink dyes. This looks like markers to me for the most part just because of uh, how the streakiness builds up in some areas. Like here you can see the marker going back over itself. But some of it looks like it could be like a Doc Martin pH dye radiant watercolor, um, which I think is what Barry Windsor Smith was using. But anyways, using these like really pure colors and then piling them on top of each other in these like solid little patches and building up more color out of that is kind of the Barry Windsor Smith approach. And I think Nick Pyle has made that his own in a way I've never seen anybody else do. So that's very attractive to me. Um, if you strip the color out, and there's a page in here where there's some color stripped out. Yeah, here. Um, I still like the character designs. I still like the art. But you get a sense that the actual drawing, you know, still is... It's good, but that's where there's some work to be done still. I think is in the actual, like, structure of the drawing underneath. And some of the characters, you know, like this character, it was never really convincing to me throughout the book. Um... So I think there's a lot of room for growth in Nick Pyle's art. I think this is a young artist. And by young, I mean early in their career. I don't know an actual age. Uh, but the, the color work, I think, is really what's carrying it. And then there's some development to be had in the drawing still, which is fine because it's such a singular vision. It will be exciting to follow how this, how this artist um, refines their work as they go. So the, the story is kind of just like, this is what you should do for your first book. You just have a little one and done, like nice little battle scene. Um, I would have liked some more emotional stakes. You know, there's nothing that really makes me there. Well, there's this like last little bit here where they're finding some kind of, I don't know, wire baby or something, but there's not enough of an explanation of what that is uh, for me to really connect with it. You know, it seems like there's some mental connection being made that gets lost, but that doesn't really, 
play much of a factor in the ending of the story as far as I could tell. So I think some more like emotional connection to the characters would be good. It's nice that it's a one and done story, but I also just didn't understand the stakes. And I, I get that I could come back and check in with these characters for another adventure, but I, I don't know much about them as characters still. So a little bit more of that for, for like a first release would have been nice. But this is a nice one and done. Um, and again, I think this is the, the first first piece by Nick Pyle. So it's a really great first piece and someone I really look forward to, to seeing grow. This This right here is indicative of the type of stuff I was seeing on Instagram that I found so interesting um, and had me really hype like just the way see in here I feel like the drawing is better like it's more solid it's kind of taking the Kirby isms uh, like this type of Kirby mark making here and combining it with the Barry Windsor Smith mark making and kind of having a weird like sci-fi aesthetic but this character that doesn't have all the wires and the the cool metal you know 1990s image like metal straps over their arm um this is where it's like okay it's not poorly drawn but i think the drawing could sing a little bit more on a more simple character i definitely feel like it's in the in these effects and stuff where nick Pyle's work really sings like this is good really natural pose but i don't know it's just not quite not quite up to the par of this stuff yet um so it will be it will be really fun to see as like the simplicity of the drawing gets better and better you get that moebius thing where it can be just like five lines and it's great um balancing out against this kind of stuff right here i think it'll be awesome but this is the type of stuff i was seeing uh and you can see here it says i did over 100 variations or around 100 variations of the beard and helmet combo and that's where I see like this, this is somebody who's really interested in character design. Um, and the Instagram stuff suggests that as well, a lot of character design. And that that's fine, like that's its whole own discipline. Um, but I'm excited to see Nick moving away from, okay, it's not just character design sketches, but it is moving towards books. And that, that excites me as well. So I don't think the book has everything that I see in the character designs in it yet. Like this right here, this was a test page. And I think this is a really successful piece here. Uh, there's a lot going on in there. But I, anyways, I don't think the most successful things in the, the character design phase have showed up in the story design phase yet. Um, I don't think that skill set has totally combined with the, the storytelling skill set yet. Um, I don't think there's any bad storytelling in here. I just think some of the single images within aren't as strong as some of the other ones. So it's a this is a cool book that has shows me an artist that has a lot of potential. And this is the type of artist that I would suggest if if you have money and you can throw some money at someone to support. So they get to their next project and we can see this artist grow. This would be a great book to do that on. If you're sitting here and you have a limited budget for the month, then it's like, you know, take a look at it. See if you like the art. And if it's your type of thing, definitely go out and get it. Um, but it's it's not the most like complete as a story. And there are some really great pieces of art in here. And there's some shakier ones. So if you're on a budget, you know, and there's other things that are attracting you, then maybe this this isn't the book to go running out and grab. It's it's pretty big uh, hardcover book too. So it's I don't remember how much I paid. It's not on here, but kind of expensive. So anyways, I'm really happy I got it. Uh, I'm really excited about seeing where Nick Pyle goes as an artist. Uh, this is somebody who has a really unique singular vision and I can see it developing and, and getting much more sophisticated. So I'm on board. I'm on board for Nick Pyle projects. I'm on board for, for seeing where, where Nick goes. I'm uh, excited about that. Um, if you enjoy what we're doing here on the channel and you want to support us, then you could do that through Patreon. We have a couple different tiers on there where there's some voting, there's some contests you can win. Th that money always helps us buy the books that we review. And then the, looking at what Sean's doing with Living the Line Publishing is the best way that you can support us. So we'll take a look at some of the books that he has coming out now. The Exile by Eric Creek is a gorgeously illustrated Viking saga of revenge. Eric Creek calls it his Viking Western. It's about a, a guy who's been away on the, the war path and is returning home um, to uh, some family troubles that have to be resolved. 
and this is told in just this amazing like kind of three color art style that looks like old woodblock cuts or something. It's absolutely gorgeous book that you've got to pick up. Sala Niyalo, Path of the Shades by Clarence Doss is a really cool ongoing project that Living the Line will be producing. Clarence is a PhD student from Fiji who's studying the myths of Fiji for his doctoral thesis. And part of that study project is that he's producing these comics. They're kind of like Hellboy where there's these little short stories that capture all of these different mythologies. But then he's using that to wrap the project into his doctoral thesis and then provide educational material where people can come to these comics. You know, they don't have to read his PhD thesis, they can come to the comics and get a more consumable version of the mythology of Fiji. Thanks for following along. Take it away, Jack. You want to see all these books? Smash that subscribe button and the like button and the bell and then you get them.